Kate and Severin. Heavy from the featherweights. Underdog winners from losers. You celebrate. Couple brand movers from dudes that's really selling weight. Ones who get told what to do, but ones who delegate now. I'ma set it straight. It's level to the shit. And I'm a five star general. I got medals for this shit. You see, I was in the field when the game was about principles. And gangsters didn't take no pictures or do anything. It changed. This shit is new. Everybody wasn't selling. Yeah, you couldn't put walk on the block with no resume. You couldn't just walk outside and just hustle. You had to be about that life and pay the muscle. What's going on, people? Tonight we're going to cover an underworld heavyweight. See, people need to know who really was powerful, who really was making things happen. Now, South Philly stand up. We're covering the OG Tracy Mason. Now, in his own words, I'm not a gangster, I'm a businessman. See, life hits us all with challenges. It could either make you or break you. It could bring the hustle out of you or it could knock you on your ass. Now, with his mother passing away in a car accident at age 12, and with his father walking out of his life, he had two options. Sit around, wait for something to come to him, or make something happen. He had to provide for himself. He needed clothes. He needed food. He needed sneaker money. Now, you tell me at the age of 12 years old what you're going to do to provide for yourself. Now, don't worry. I'll wait. He started selling cigarettes. Now here's the thing, back in the day, they had cigarette machines and they was going for 55 cents. He would take a crowbar, break into multiple cigarette machines and load the cigarettes into a trash bag and sell them in front of bars for 35 cents. So 20 cents less than what they was going for. Now, after a while, people started to notice that it was him. It, they noticed it was him. He was the one stealing from the machines, but they couldn't do nothing because of his family ties. His grandma had numbers rackets with multiple number houses, and his uncle was a member of the Philly Black Mafia. So the hustle was in his genes. Now as a youngin', he would put together a crew, and they would all sell cigarettes. Now his uncle, which was the member of the Philly Black Mafia, was impressed by the hustle and his leadership, and wanted his nephew to take it up a notch. So T. Mason graduated to weed. Now he started pitching on 20th and Tasca, which was known as the Ozone. His uncle was getting a supply of dog food from New York, and guess who was supplying them? Frank Lucas. So his uncle would send him on a bus to New York with his basketball and a book bag. He would get to New York, and they would load him up, sending him back to Philly because who's paying attention to a kid? So that was a great idea. Now through South Philly High School, he would develop relationships with the Italians. Their relationship would grow stronger. Now, during this time, blacks wasn't even allowed to just walk around in Italian neighborhoods, but Tracy Mason did. The Italians loved him. He would be invited over for dinner and treated as family. Now, he went off to college in the early 80s. He attended Cheney University and would commute from home because he thought he was missing something. He felt like he was missing out on that coke money out in Ozone. Then he started selling coke to the college students. It was known as a study drug during the time. Kids would get on it to stay focused he spent most of his time making money and partying in his college days. He would walk around campus and tell him made clothing, but eventually he would drop out of college. Now, he would return back to Ozone and his Italian buddies would visit and they would pull up in brand new Cadillacs and they would tell him like, hey, you better start messing with those casinos out in AC. Now, during that time, a lot of casinos were being built and they needed dealers. Believe it or not, the dealers were making $50,000 a year, and this was the 80s, so he became a craps dealer. Now, during the holidays, casinos was packed with Jews because they didn't celebrate Christmas or Easter. So during that time, they would play the casinos heavy. That's when he really saw money. He would see them drop bags of money at his table, and that's what he thought to himself. Like, damn, I need to get some paper. So he took it up a notch. He started selling coke in the casinos to the cocktail waitress, pit bosses, and other dealers. Now, remember when I said coke was a study drug in college? Well, coke was the stay-up drug in the casinos for people to get through their shifts. And he was in there making a killing. And that's when he started getting closer and closer to the Italians, partying with guys like Chucky and Joey Merlino after a shift, meeting Nicky Scarfo, private mafia parties, running through all the hotels and casinos, partying with beautiful women. Now, there was another dealer in AC that grabbed the Italian's attention. He was young, black, pulling up in a Mercedes SL and had a Rolex. It was rare. It was a different type of fly. 
Now, Natanya thought he had to be into some type of illegal activity. Merlina would ask Tracy, and Tracy knew he recognized him from a night of partying. It was Benjamin Goff. They called him Simon. They would develop a friendship partying in AC. After Natanya saw Simon Mercedes, they started to ask their parents for one. Simon was one of the first in Philly with the Mercedes. He put a lot of people on, and I think Mercedes might owe him a check. <laughs> but they was big on cars. You know, Simon, he got his accessories from L.A. Now, he would show Tracy Mason a magazine called Los Angeles Motor Accessories and came up with the idea of starting a business that sell car accessories. Before you knew it, the two put up money together to start Philadelphia Motor Accessories. It did so well, they were getting celebrity traffic with one of them being Teddy Pendergrass. They opened up a second shop in Germantown called A-Tech. Between the two shops, they would install AMG kits, lambskin seat covers, they sold keychains, alpina glasses, and many more. Now he went from being a 12 year old, wondering how was he gonna provide for himself, to having two businesses, having great ties with made men, getting a hold of anything he wanted with just a phone call, and all of this before the age of 30. Just like I said in the beginning, life could either make you or break you. It turned him into a very powerful man. Now, once upon a time, it was a hairstylist named Agina that knew every player in Philly. Agina was a dime that all the players wanted. She shows up to A-Tech with a man dressed in all white with a gold Prezi and a Rolex ring. Now, he's loading up saying, I want this, I want that, and ended up getting gold BBSs for his Volvo and, and much more. Now, he dropped straight cash like it was nothing. Now, after business was finished, one of them shouted, yo, you got a name? He said, yeah, they call me AJ. So he returns as a happy customer, but this time he bought some friends. They were getting their car situated. Other business came into conversation. With Tracy Mason, entrepreneur mindset, La Costa Nostra ties, hustler mentality, being a natural earner, a business mentor, having him on a team is a W. And within a period of time, Tracy, Aaron Jones, and a couple of other fellas sat at the big table and came up with those three letters. Tracy Mason became one of the founders of JBM. Now, I know y'all want the detailed stories, and I heard the stories. I sat on the phone four hours with the hierarchy of JBM. But if y'all want to hear it from the horse's mouth, y'all have to act like it, show support, like the videos, comment. Follow Tracy Mason on Instagram, like all his photos, leave comments. Because I promise that they see the support, we can get Tracy Mason. We can hear the stories from Aaron Jones and the rest of them. But we got to take care of these guys first, man. I can't put it any other way. Now, let's talk about some fly shit. Now, if a big fight was happening in AC, Tracy Mason and I would grab 20 ringside seats. Tracy was even tapped in with the fight judges, so he was getting anything he wanted having it his way. Now, he was going out every other night attending private mob parties and would spend at least five grand a night when he stepped out. He knew almost every car dealership owner. If he walk into McDonald's, he's going to want to speak with Ronald McDonald. <laughs> so, I know all my OGs remember second story. Now, when Tracy pulled up, he walked right in. He don't wait in no lines, of course. When staff would see him approaching, they would let everyone know he's coming up. So, had a bottle's ready. When everybody was drinking Don, he was on his own wave drinking bottles in 1978 to Tenji collection. Now, that was $150 a bottle in the 80s, so just imagine how much it costs now. And he had multiple bottles, so you already know how it was going down. Now, on a Wednesday, the Bulls were in town to play the 76ers. Now, Michael Jordan was in the spot. Now, this wasn't a Michael Jordan that was winning the championship, but this was the scoring champion, Mike. Now, Michael had all the women in the section. When Tracy Mason entered the building, all the women rushed to Tracy. Now, this was the time when the hustlers was getting more money than the NBA players. Now, we all know about the war against the Shower Posse. The Shower Posse had one mission, and they was here to take over territory. Now, of course, bodies were dropping, but during the same time, they got some of the Shower Posse to get down. So, yes, JBM was supplying the Shower Posse. With Tracy being a businessman, he would work with members of the Posse and even become friends with a couple of them. Now, it was the event where he felt like he was being followed after meeting Joey Merlino and receiving an envelope. He spotted white guys speeding through the red lights right behind him. He would stop and learn that it was the task force, but they wasn't after him. Now, with them seeing that, 
that's when he linked him to the mob. Now, after that, time would go by, and one morning he would go to the hangout spot in the apartment building. Now, before he entered the unit, he noticed right across from him was an unfamiliar white guy entering a unit that he never saw before. And he would bring that to the fella's attention. But someone said it's probably the maintenance guy, so they ignored it. So while being in there, he was waiting to drop off his son. So he would drop his son off, and then he went to go pick up some money. Now, when he make his way back to the apartment, the Philadelphia Police Department narcotics unit conducted a drug bust. And he found it very funny when the police reported $80,000 when he knew damn well it was $1.5 million in today's money in there. Now, he was charged with drug possession and violation of Pennsylvania Firearms Uniform Act. He gave them seven years and was released from prison in 1994. Now, in today's time, he's a family man, married with kids, putting them through college and everything, doing well at life. He's a broker, so whatever car you need, you can reach out to him. Now, don't forget to follow his Instagram, show some love, hit me up in the comments, get these likes all the way up. Subscribe, man. We need, you know, we got big things coming. So thanks for watching and I'm out.